So we're going to take a look at cleaning up some of the graphics of our project. So I think the one interesting thing about this course is when we're working with larger buildings, my in my case it actually isn't that big, but getting the building to fit on 11 by 17 is a little bit difficult. Um, we can take a look at our drawing here. And so we don't really have much more room. I mean, we can maybe go up a little bit in scale. Uh, maybe going to uh, th 13 sixteenths. But I'm going to leave it at 1 8 because I think a lot of your projects will likely be around this scale. And I think the first thing that we start to notice is a lot of the text is is quite large. And my recommendation is typically to be around 1 16th. So over on the left hand side in the project browser, we're going to go to families, we're going to go to annotation symbols, we're going to go down to our grid lines. And we're going to go to our grid. Um, we're going to go to our no head or no bubble. Um, and I'm actually going to turn off the bubble on these grid lines. So um, to start, let's actually grab these grid lines. Let's go from here and let's go to edit. And we can actually change this to be grid circle, no bubble. And that will, um, this OK button is right behind where, and so there we go. Um, um, I think it, it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, it's not necessarily as technical, but I think it starts to look a little bit cleaner from a design perspective. Second thing we want to do is we want to reduce text size. So we're going to go over here on this grid head, no bubble. We're going to click edit. And we're going to change that text size from 3 sixteenths. So we're going to up here. Uh, let's go to rename. We'll rename this to be 1 sixteenth. And rename this to be 1 sixteenth. Or renumber, I guess, that to be 1 sixteenth. And that should reduce the text size quite a bit. And then we don't really need to do anything with the bubble here, but I'm going to at the same time take this bubble down to 1 8th. And uh, we probably could go a little smaller with the bubble, but I think we'll leave it there. Let's load into project and close. Um, I think it's good practice to start saving this. Um, even if we just save this in a folder as part of this, and I'm just going to create a folder in here called families. And uh, it's a good place to kind of keep track of them. We could also get in the habit of adding some sort of naming to it. So it could just be BIM. Uh, uh, yeah, we just put BIM in there, um, whatever you want to do. And um, we just need to now, because we renamed it, it's not automatically going to change, but we just need to go up here to grid no bubble and change it to our grid no bubble BIM, and that will reduce that text size. Um, I like to take everything down, so you know we could take these tags down as well. And I think it just it becomes a bit of a better text size for everything. It you know there's really not much need to have everything not being the same text size. So I'm gonna make this two thirty seconds, which is one sixteenth. And uh, yeah, so just taking everything down to that same text size. Um, again, we can rename this one to be BIM if we want, or we could just save it. Um, up to you if you want to add some sort of identifier to know which families you've created and edited. Um, and so that looks a little better. Um, next thing we have is the section heads and the section tails. So the section tails are just this black line here. Um, same, we find those under here in the family section. So we can go to section tail, we can go to edit. And section tail, um, I'm going to just reduce this significantly. Um, right here, I don't actually see any control um, in terms of dimensions or anything. So if we hit VG here and we go over to annotation categories, we can turn on dimensions and reference planes. And this gives us a little bit um, more insight to how it's being controlled. Um, we could add just a, some dimensions here so we actually know what we're controlling. So maybe this we take down to, uh, it's not letting me edit these. I don't know why. So let's move this on one eighth. Uh, and I don't know, I wonder if this size is constrained. Uh, it is locked. 
so something is locked here. Must be a oh, there is a dimension out there. Okay, so dimension is just super far out here. So we can take this size. So let's unlock it. Take that size down to uh, one quarter. Um, and you can go smaller if you want. And then we can take this width down a little bit as well. Um, again, we can unlock it. Take that width down to be one sixteenth. And just a little bit of a tweak there kind of helps clean up that tail. Let's save that. Again, I think it's good to get in the practice of saving a lot of your families. So that I think already looks a little bit better. Um, it looks like it got shifted there, so we got to figure that out. So let's just go back into that tail and see what we did. I think it was when we moved it. Um, there is probably an internal origin here. Let's just move it up one eighth. Because I think that's what we uh, did in the beginning. Let's just load that back in and see if that fixes it. And always override with parameter, and that was way too much. All right, well, uh, try not to move it. <laughs> I'm going to pause that and just... All right, I have that tail shifted back. Um, what I did was I actually opened up the other tail horizontal and just copied uh, this box into the other family, and that was... Uh, basically enabled me to kind of get it back into its spot. So a uh, little trick there. Um, I could have also just loaded it, um, the original back in from insert load as family. Um, let's do the section head here. So let's figure out what head we have. So we're going to click on our section line right there. We're going to go up to edit type and we're going to open up this uh, box here and it says we have our section head filled. So let's open that up. Section head filled. Click edit. And similar to that of the other one, we want to keep this line in the middle where it is. So we want to do everything around the center. So these labels, let's rename these down to 1 16th. And change the text size down to 1 16th. And click OK. And so let's grab this bubble. Let's make it down to 1 8th. And let's do the same for the outer bubble. I'm going to grab these just for a second and I'm just going to hit I'm just going to hit HH on those so I can find this line, make this down to 1 8th. And it uh, looks like we need to bring that text up. So I'm just going to use the arrows on my keyboard to bring it up a little bit and then use the arrows on this one to bring it down and let's uh, actually let's go to VG here and just bring our reference planes and dimensions here probably the one good thing would be to do is make sure uh, this reference plane is pinned here so we don't move it and then where this mark is here that's where it connects to that line um, and so what we want to do is move this over so it is on that mark and uh, now we just need to make this smaller so I'm going to reset my view here and so we have our our uh, piece there and then let's move this reference plane in it's on the other side of our circle and then let's reduce the size of this so it's back down to fitting around our piece there. And let's just delete those for now. And so we have our triangle. Let's move this triangle in so it touches the bubble. Use the arrows just to bring it out a little bit. 
So that's there. One thing I'm doing a little bit differently is I'm leaving a little bit of a gap and that just allows me to um, um, use one filled region <clears throat> instead of four. So let's go to create, uh, let's go to filled regions and let's click all of our lines here. And that should be good there, filled solid. And then we have that line going across there. So that should be good. We could bring this down a little bit as well and load that into our project. And it looks like we could have actually made that circle a little bit smaller. And we do need to remove that line I did put in there. So let's go back into section head filled, edit. Yeah, let's delete that line. Load that back in. Yeah, so now we, we have a much smaller section head now. So certainly do that with uh, the callouts as well. But it starts to really make the scale of everything that you're working on a little bit more readable. Um, again, just going through and finding and editing all the text size for every single piece. And then the elements you can't find are usually down in here under families and uh, likely under annotation symbols here. So that's how you edit and change the, sex, the, the text size of a lot of these different elements.